Hey there, Trek friends! Today, we're going to talk about Star Trek directors. In this first installment of a two-part series, we'll be talking about Trek's worst with a subsequent video talking about the best. To try and define best and worst as effectively as possible, we'll be looking at bodies of directing work, and only at individuals that have directed five or more episodes of Star Trek. While there are a ton of people and moving parts that make a production, I still feel it's fair to use the list I've curated over the past four years, ranking every episode of Star Trek, and average a director's work by the rankings to determine the winners and losers here. With those stipulations in place, let's talk about the 10 worst directors in Trek history. I apologize in advance if I mispronounce anyone's name. I've got to start off with a dishonorable mention before the official 10. Russ Mayberry didn't actually even direct an episode of Trek and was fired mid-production of Code of Honor, paving the way for prolific Trek director Les Landau to get his first seat in the big chair for the franchise. But alas. By that point in the production, not even a legendary director could save that hot piece of garbage. Kicking off our actual measured rankings at 10th worst, David Strayton. Having directed 10 episodes of Enterprise, the best being the first two parts of a three-parter, Babel 1 and United, and the worst being A Night in Sickbay. And it's the last one that pulls his average down pretty far. Despite some saying these are the voyages is the worst thing ever, I find this one about Archer's pickled dog, his wet dreams about T'Pol, and helping Phlox catch his Pyrithian bat, the most over-the-top TOS-like thing ever attempted in the modern day. And since I know Scott Bakula can work with bad scripts, this is definitely a failure to direct. He also helmed other Enterprise underperformers such as Daedalus and Desert Crossing. Outside of Trek, he's got the most directing credits on 10 episodes of House and a ton of other shows you might recognize. Number 9. Mark Daniels. A TOS era director with 14 episodes under his belt that range from quite good with the likes of the Doomsday Machine and I Mud but unfortunately loses a lot of ground with titles like Spock's Brain and Who Mourns for Adonis. With a career starting in the late 40s and working all the way up to his death in 1989, Mark had quite the resume, with a bunch that surround Trek's godmother Lucille Ball. For as many memorable things as he did in and out of Trek, Spock's Brain is a pretty big obstacle to overcome in a list like this. If the director had done just a bit of reworking and maybe better casting, I think this premise could have come off as a little less clueless in its execution. Either way, Mark, thanks for helping turn the Cage's low end of mediocre script into something very interesting with the menagerie. Number 8. Corey Allen. This nine-time Trek director has headed up such bangers as DS9's The Circle and The Maquis Part 2, and such piles of nonsense as Home Soil and TNG's first feature-length episode, Encounter at Farpoint. His midpoints in the list show him to be Wesley Crusher's biggest fan, having directed three Will Wheaton-centered episodes, The Game, Final Mission, and his departure with The Traveler in Journey's End. All of these serviceable to mediocre episodes in the franchise. As much as I love Star Trek, if I were the head of Paramount and Corey and Gene Roddenberry turned in Encounter at Farpoint, I would have asked for a second pilot a second time. And wonder why the studio was already $10 million into production of an 80s television show. Number 7. Joseph Pevney. First of all, I'd like to highlight the good this amazing Golden Age of Trek director did with the distinction of directing the best episode of TOS on my list, The Trouble with Tribbles, and other classics like Journey to Babel and Arena. His filmography takes a turn for the worse, though, with episodes like Cat's Paw, The Apple, and The Deadly Years, which drags the Tribbles down like an anchor. He directed a good chunk of episodes for Wagon Train in the years prior, 
and worked on popular television through the 80s. I'll take the animatronic balls of fur over low FPS bird puppets every day of the week. A surprising entry at number six, Patrick Stewart. Going purely by averages, only having directed five episodes, Sir Patrick is the only Trek actor turned director who makes the worst list. Though, being honest, I don't think his directing is really the problem with any of these episodes in particular. The problem is that he doesn't have a breakout episode under his belt, just a series of mediocre ones, with the highest ranked being Preemptive Strike, where Roe departs Starfleet for the Maquis, and the worst actually being well directed for a Western that we didn't need at all in A Fistful of Datas. The rest are all in the four and five hundreds out of more than 800 episodes of Trek, and in general, I think he did his best with these middling at best scripts. Number five, Rob Bowman. Kinda feel bad for the director that brought us a top 20 episode like Q-Who that is also the unfortunate recipient of a little incomplete script during the late 80s writer's strike titled Shades of Grey, which goes down on my and many other people's lists as the worst episode Trek has ever spawned. Not only does it feel directionless, the actors feel like they've given up and aren't sure if they'll get axed in between seasons. Diana Muldar is the only one even pretending they're filming something that we'll see the light of day of. The other big failure attributed to Rob is Manhunt, a Loxana Troy episode that goes absolutely nowhere and might even be a revised second worst episode in all time in Trek. The rest of his directing credits are more middle of the road at best episodes. Of note, outside of Trek, he directed 34 episodes of The X-Files, including its 1998 big screen movie. If the truth was out there, he only ever found it in one episode of Trek. Number four, Paul Lynch. At his best, he brought us TNG's The First Duty, where not Tom Paris gets Wesley Crusher into some trouble, and at his worst, we got The Naked Now, TNG's second episode that's just as badly written as the TOS script it copies off of. He also helmed a bunch of mediocre to bad episodes like DS9's The Passenger and Qless, which I think totally could have been better than written with a bit better direction. He did a bunch of notable shows in the 80s and 90s like Moonlighting, The Twilight Zone, and Xena Warrior Princess. Unfortunately, in the grand scheme of Trek, many of his episodes are largely forgettable. At number three, Vincent McKevity. For the director of TOS's second best episode, Balance of Terror, he also had some not so great stuff like Miri and the Omega Glory. With Miri, I don't think anyone is expecting much when you have to direct kids, because it's way more difficult. Directing 45 episodes of Gunsmoke shows that he was ready for Trek's Spectre of a Gun, whose set location and budget kept getting slashed till eventually all Vincent had to work with were these cheesy facades. I'll say for an episode that short on meaningful plot, I actually kind of love that it takes a dig at the Potemkin village that often were the sets of these traditional spaghetti westerns. And clearly Balance of Terror was so nice, it had to be done twice in a what-if kind of episode of Strange New Worlds. Number two, Ralph Sineski. This man is still alive at 100, and started his directing career in the days of the original Twilight Zone, with one of my favorites starring Burgess Meredith, and has directed as recently as 2013. That being said, his best episode of the list starts at around number 500, with Return to Tomorrow, and gets worse from there, bottoming out with This Side of Paradise, where the crew gets drunk on flowers, and Kirk and Spock fight because. He either had a thing for or just got lucky to work with Diana Maldar in both of her TOS appearances, which are both beautifully acted by her, but neither is executed super well as an overall script. Another average at best TOS director. Before I reveal the top director, if you're enjoying the content, please consider a like and subscribe. Taking the award for worst in show at number one, Judd Taylor. 
out of around 800 live-action episodes of Trek, his average is around 700. Let This Be Your Last Battlefield is probably his best work, which is only good because of the message and not because of a hokey-as-can-be episode. At the bottom of the ladder, he sat in the big chair for the Paradise Syndrome and Mark of Gideon. While I love the chick's outfit in Gideon, the lack of direction is particularly noticeable with pretty much the entire guest cast. The premise was weird, but with more direction, I think it could have ranked a bit higher. Though he has a relatively expansive directing resume over 40 years, the majority of it I've never heard of, save doing several episodes of Law & Order shortly before his death in 2008. While he only had the bare minimum five directing credits to make this list, they were unfortunately all in TOS's ill-fated third season. That about does it. Look for the Best Directors video to be out soon. Come chat live with me and friends every Sunday here on this channel as we talk Trek on Buffer Time at 2 p.m. Eastern. And until I see you again, live long and prosper.